like Job. My eyes shall see him and not another. I'll see him for myself. Hallelujah.
it, it's just so big. Can't hear me? Oh, man, I thought I was talking loud enough. <laughs> hey, man. Hallelujah. And, and so we access this marvelous grace that God has given us by faith, through faith. And I want to use for a title today, It Is Well. It is well. Whatever you're going through, seek the promise that will conquer it. And having said that in faith, simply say, it is well. It is well because God said it. He cannot lie. He will not fail us. Therefore, it shall surely come to pass. So what is faith? I'm going to give you the three things that Holy Spirit gave me, and it's, it's probably redundant to many of you, but it, it, I always like it when the Lord gives it to me because it just makes it feel so much more fresh, you know. Amen. Kind of like my fruit fresh and hallelujah, my uh, amen. <laughs> hallelujah. So what is faith? Faith is the substance the confidence, the reality, the essence of things hoped for. The promises of God through faith makes our hopes a reality. What are we hoping for? What is it in our lives that we hope would change? Well, faith can make that hope alive. If we simply believe God's word, because faith is the substance of our hopes. And faith is, let me go on to the second one. Faith is the evidence or proof of things not seen. Faith itself is the word of God. Faith itself is the word of God. <clears throat> and the faith that God desires for us to live on, to live by, again, is his word. That's the way God has set it up. He has set up this world that way. That's why all through Proverbs, all through Psalms, pertinent through the entire Old Covenant, God says, these are the blessings of righteousness if you believe and obey my word. And, and those things, wonderful things happen. You know, I, <clears throat> I marvel at uh, uh, Abraham because uh, I'm now in those, those latter years of, of my physical life. And, and, you know, you read about uh, Abraham and how that at 120 years old, his strength was not abated. Neither were his eyes dim. Today we would say, Abraham, you are the man. Huh? I mean, he was, he was at 120 years old. He was as a man of 20 years old because of spending time in the presence of the Lord and obeying God's word. Psalms 103 tells us that one of the benefits of, of the Lord is that he will renew our strength like the eagles. We will mount up as wing like, wings like eagles. We shall run and not be worried. We'll walk and not faint. It, it's just God has given us, he's given us those things. God has restored us. Jesus Christ took all that sin and the devil laid on us and defeated it and restored us to a present sin state. That's what he's done. It is done. It is a, a, a finished work. So faith is defined in Romans 4.17. Turn with me to Romans 4.17.
I'll read from the King James and then the Amplified. God says to Abraham, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things that are not as though they were. That is the definition of working faith. Because God says it, even though I don't have it, I'm going to call it as though it were. Because God said it, and I believe it. Amen. Hallelujah. And then the Amplified, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. He was appointed our father, Abraham was, uh, in the sight of God in whom we believed, who gives life to the dead and speaks of the non-existent things that he has foretold and promised as if they already existed. Which brings us to, to this point. The moment that we believe God's word, the moment that we believe what we ask for in the spirit, it is done. It is done. And we're going to give you some examples of that in just a minute. It is done in the spirit realm, but may not manifest immediately as set forth in Hebrews 11, 7 to 12. Sometimes what we ask of God will happen right away. Well, a few times what we ask God of, God for, will happen right away. But most of the time, there's a waiting period. God doesn't tell us why. I, I would say it's just to prepare us or, I don't know, it just, there's just a time for things to take place. You know, it's just like when Jesus came, Galatians 3 tells us, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his own son into this world. There was just a perfect time for Jesus to come. And there is a perfect set time for whatever you and I ask God of. And sometimes it's immediate, but other times it is down the road. So let's just look at that in operation. Let's go back to... Uh, Hebrews 11, and let's go uh, to verse 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet. What did God tell him? I'm going to send a flood upon the earth, but at the time that God told him, it was not yet seen. In the spirit realm, it was done because God said it. But in the appointed time, it's going to manifest itself. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world because the world was saying, oh, I ain't going to be no flood. It ain't going to rain. Just like folks are saying today, oh, the world ain't going to come to an end. And it's always going to be here. In 2168, we'll be in flying cars. <coughs> you know? So, <coughs> by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith, by faith in what God said. Noah believed that God was going to send a flood just like he said he would, and he began building an ark because God told him how to get to escape it. You know. <clears throat> then verse 8, by faith Abraham, this one, this one, boy, this... <coughs> I, I put myself in Abraham's place, and I hope I'd do what he did. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should uh, after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not even knowing where he was going. But he believed God. 
You know, we have the promises of God. And, and the really big thing seemingly within the body of Christ these days is healing. Healing and deliverance. There are a lot of sick folk. There are people who need deliverance. God said, with his stripes we were healed. And if we were healed, we are healed. That's what the word of God says. Hallelujah. Then, let's continue on with Abraham. By faith, Abraham sojourned in the, in the land of promise. In other words, he was a stranger in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. And, and, and so not only did, did God tell Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to take you to a land. I'm going to make it your inheritance. Your people will be in bondage there for 420 years. 420, 430 for 30 years, and then I'm going to deliver them out of Egypt and give them that land. And it happened exactly like God said. God's word will do what it says. It'll do what it says. And then Sarah, through faith, verse 11, also, Sarah her, herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him what? Faithful. Faithful to his word. Faithful to his promises. She judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, that one being Abraham, and Abraham is good as dead, a lineage so, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude as, as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. So Sarah is 90 years old, and she is doing what 20-year-old women do, 30-year-old women, 40-year-old women. Abraham is 100 years old, and Abraham is doing what 20-year-old men do, and 30-year-old men, and however long it goes. God, not in even the impossible, can stand in the way of the, the word of God coming to pass. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we have to take the time to meditate in the word day and night. After we've gotten sick, after we've run out of money, it's too late at that point to start meditating on the word of God. Because we probably won't have the faith to see the end of the promise. We need to always be in preparation by meditating in the word day and night so that we'll always be stored up with faith. The power to believe God and to know that it's going to, to come to pass. So, what do we do until our request moves from the spirit realm into the natural? One of my favorite stories in all scripture is in 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings, go with me to 2 Kings chapter 4. And we will begin at verse 8. And, and just to give you a background to this, uh, there was a, a, a woman uh, in, in uh, uh, the land of Shuman who 
would keep the prophet Elijah whenever he would come through because she honored the prophet of God. Verse 8, and it fell on a day that Elisha uh, passed to Shuman where was a great woman and she constrained him to eat bread and so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she, she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God which passes by us continually. Let's make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, a table, and a stool, and a candlestick, and it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in thither. And it fell on a day that he came, Elisha came thither, he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi his servant, Gehazi, that guy, he's something else. Call this Shumanite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us. In other words, you have most painstakingly and reverently provided for us. Wouldest thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. I don't need that. And he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, verily, uh, she hath no child, and her husband is old. And he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said about this season, according to the time of life, which is nine months, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, No, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thine handmaid. Now, what that tells us there is that she made some conditions with Elisha uh, according to this promise. That's what it's saying. He, she, it, we are not told what the conditions are, but from reading the story and seeing how it comes out, she basically told him, Don't give him to me if you're going to take him away. Don't give him to me if you're going to take him away. All right. And so time goes on. The child's grown, grown up some. Verse 18, and when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers. And he said to his father, my head, my head. And he said to the lad, he said to a lad, carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, why are you going? Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, it shall be well. This woman was speaking her faith. Amen. Notice that she did not say to her husband, your son that you sent home with the lad is up in the chamber dead. She had received a promise from God. And a condition, they had conditions again. It's not said, but he, she said, don't lie to me. That's what she said to the prophet. And so she's believing God, and she, she's leaving. Her husband asked her, where are you going? And, and, and she says, it's well. It is well. Brothers and sisters in Christ. When we receive a promise of God and everything is going just the opposite of what the promise says, faith says it is well. Hallelujah. It is well. But we have to listen. Our minds have to be renewed to the truth. Our minds have to be renewed to the word of God. Because from the natural standpoint, you all, 
from the natural standpoint, what would any of us have said to this man? The boy's dead. He died. If we don't know that God can do the impossible, we'll, we'll agree with whatever the situation is that we're dealing with. If we don't have the faith for it. And in this natural world, you are, I, I cannot overemphasize this. All of us have been raised in this natural world, and we know what happens when people die. We just go ahead and get ready for the funeral. Amen. Amen. When the Lord says that one of the things that we as, 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 as people of faith can do is raise the dead. Boy, well, Pastor Morris, I don't know about that. Well, that's when he sent the 70 out. That's what they did. And there are, you know, our, our modern day person who's done that is, is uh, Andrew Womack. He believed God and God raised his son from the dead. You ought to hear that testimony. And, and it wasn't one of those things where he was just dead for a few minutes. This kid was dead for either four to six hours. But he believed God. And from the natural standpoint, you and I are used to when people die, they're dead. But when we come to the place, Jesus asked, said to this man, listen, if you can just believe, all things are possible. Brothers and sisters in Christ, all things. He is able to supersede this world. Uh, so easy. Amen. Uh, it, it's, it's nothing. It, it wasn't nothing for Jesus to walk on water. And he wasn't walking on that water timidly wondering if he was going to go down. Peter did. But Jesus didn't. And I praise God that Peter had the faith at least to respond to the word. And it was just one word. Come. Lord, bid me come. And Jesus said, come. And that word was full of the faith that gave him the ability to walk on water. But he got out there, and a big wave came up, and Jesus disappeared from his sight. <laughs> and he began to tremble and to shake and to look at the water and the wind blowing and sinking cried out, Lord, save me. If he had just maintained his stand on the word. Now, I am not criticizing Peter. I don't know how many of us would have just sat in the boat. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm saying. So we can't criticize Peter. The other 11 sat in the boat. <laughs> They were thinking, we're going to watch and see what happens to this man. <laughs> With God, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. It's one of my, my uh, decrees every day. Every day. Almost every day. Chester, he's talking to me. And if you read it, he's talking to you. If you can believe, all things are possible. The written word reveals the living word. The living word is the Lord Jesus Christ made flesh. So the living word reveals the living. The written word reveals the living word. Amen. And so if he says it, it'll do what it says. Brothers and sisters in Christ, don't take this just as a sermon. Take this as something to receive in your spirit, man. Take it as something that, that you desire, that you want for your life, and then take the necessary steps for it to become so. And that means that you're going to have to speak that word over and over and over again until your thoughts change about what happens when people get sick. What happens when people run out of money? What happens when people die? What, what happens, whatever this world throws at you, we have to have 
we have to know that the word of God is able to defeat whatever that is. There's a promise for everything. Everything. But we have to work on it. I know we're busy. We get caught up in this busy word world and, and we'll take and, and we even have trouble praying sometimes. Y'all know exactly what I'm saying. We have trouble praying. But we have to set aside time. We have to prioritize God and his word and prayer in our lives. And do it. Then we'll walk like so many, uh, like Noah did and like, like, like Abraham did and like Sarah did, you know. And all these others that are listed in, in, in Hebrews 11. Her faith was being tried, and her faith was that my son will live and not die. And she said, it is well. So how can we make sure we get the end of the promise? We can make sure that we get the end of the promise by renewing our minds to the truth. And then there's another way. Go with me to Matthew 7. Are you there? The Lord says in verse 7, Ask, and it shall be given you. Isn't that what he said? He doesn't say maybe, or I'll think about it. He says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Now, there are some who have grown in their faith enough where they can ask one time and believe that they receive it and it will come to pass. But there are others who cannot. And so he says now, down here in verse 8, for everyone that asketh, that means continuously, they ask and they ask and they ask, and they ask, here's, here's what he's saying. You will ask enough till you will have the faith to believe that you've received it. So if you've asked for something and you're struggling with it, you're not sure that, that God is going to do it for you, then ask again. And if you still don't feel assured, ask again. And if you still don't feel assured, ask again. For he who asks and keeps on asking shall receive. So you ask, well, what can I do? Ask and keep asking. Ask and keep asking. If you don't believe that you have it, keep asking. And eventually you're going to believe it. In time, I'm sure it's, it's it, it, the amount of time varies with each one of us. And then eventually we'll be at the place, once we experience the answer to our faith, uh, we'll be like that in verse 7, ask and it shall be given you. It takes time to get there. All of these things God is doing to prepare us for a very difficult world that is soon to come has already started, actually. We're looking at a, a lot of wickedness in the United States of America right now. We, we, are, we are seeing what happened in Israel several times, you all. Isaiah 5, where it says, um, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, uh, who take bitter for sweet and all of that. That wasn't the first time that Israel had fallen. But what happens in a nation when you get leaders and 
And I'm talking both about spiritual leaders and political leaders who are tired of God and who want to exercise their lust, they began to change the word of God. Listen, y'all, it was so bad by the time Jesus got here that all they were doing was teaching uh, uh, for doctrine the commandments of men. That's how bad it had gotten. And, and here in our nation, they're trying to, they've taken, chaplains can't pray in the name of Jesus. They're firing football coaches for praying on the field in the name of Jesus. It's Jesus that the enemy fears. It's the only, I don't want to call it a religion because that's not what it is, but that's what most people look at it is. It is the only religion in this entire world that Satan is afraid of. <laughs> While they are telling our children that they can't pray over their food in school, they are setting up prayer rooms for Muslims. Because they know Allah can't do nothing. Satan knows that Allah is just an extension of himself. But Jesus, these people who are demonized, and, it, and, and as I say that right now, Holy Spirit reminds me, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Principalities and powers affect leadership from above in the, in the second heaven. The rulers of the darkness of this world are right down here on the planet. Demonic forces working in and through people to complete the objective of Satan. And so a lot of times what we're dealing with, we're not dealing, we have their evil people, but they are acting out of the force, a, a dark demonic force that is compelling them to do the devil's will, and they do it because it satisfies their lust. What do you mean, tell me, it's wrong to steal? Yes, the Lord said, thou shalt not steal. What is it? You, you, what do you mean you can't tell me to, uh, I'm a man and I can't have sex with another man? Yes, it is wrong. God says, thou shalt not lie with men as a man lieth with a woman. They changed it, though, haven't they? And then they said, and you ministers of the gospel, they even went so far uh, in Houston, Texas, to have ministers delivering their sermons to the mayor. So she could find out if there was any quote, unquote, hate speech in them. That's where we are. And we have to have faith. I said it one time, I'll say it again. When those people in Nazareth was going to throw Jesus over the hill, Jesus said, nope, not time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he just walked through the midst of them. He probably didn't even say, I'll see you later. He just <laughs> walked through the midst of them, went on his way. You know, there may be a time in the future where you and I may need to become invisible to some type of the law. You guys, and, and, and God did that for me when I was in the world. Somebody had ratted on me, and the cops were on my tail, and, 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 and they had cops coming from every direction. But when I pulled around the corner and parked, at 9th and East Street, God just made the car and myself invisible. I remember, you guys, that cop coming down uh, East Street, headed north, and he looked over, and all he could see was that house. The one that came down 9th and turned and went up East Street, he looked right through me. I saw it, and all he saw was the house. And the other, there was four of them that went by, and not a single one of them saw me. Because you was praying for me. <laughs> I was in a mess, y'all. I'm telling you, I was out there. My gosh. 
And that can happen. That can happen, but we have to know that with God, all things are possible. And to know that whatever we encounter and we ask and we believe that we receive, I don't care how dire the circumstance looks. That Shumanite woman saw her son dead, but she stood up and she said to her husband, it is well. Hallelujah. She believed God. And it don't just come, you all. It's just, it just not an automatic thing. It takes work. It takes work. It takes, it takes prioritizing our time with the Lord. And, and you know, you guys, when I first started it, I started, boy, this is going to take da 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 You know where I'm at right now? I just can't wait. And I just enjoy that time. And, and you know, there's a day of the week that God has set aside for just me and him. I almost feel like dad is not paying any attention to anybody else but me. But I know it's not true. But it's just that special. And before I know it, two, three hours have gone by. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I kid you not. It's like time stops. But in the beginning, it's difficult. It's difficult to set aside that time because... Just like Martha, remember, Martha was in the kitchen doing this, that, and the other because she thought that it was, it was more important to do that than to be sitting before the Lord. Because he said, Master, Mary should be in here helping me. <laughs> and the Lord said, she is doing the better part, Martha. I may have those two names crossed up. You read it, you'll see. But God said to her, she's doing the better part. She's sitting at my feet, receiving my word. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we were appointed for this time. And we were not appointed to fail. Do you hear me? Hallelujah. We were not appointed to fail. But to be victorious conquerors. And we pray, my continued prayer is that we all be taken up in the rapture. That we don't have to leave, leave here before our time. And, I, and I'm going to say it again. All of us who are out here, we're saved. It's not that we're not going to be saved. It's just that we're going to leave before our time if we don't have the faith needed to defeat whatever obstacle the enemy throws our way. Amen. Amen. want to be victorious and so do you amen let us bow our heads in prayer gracious father gracious father we're so glad to be your children gracious father precious Jesus Precious Jesus, we're so glad that you redeemed us. Precious Jesus, loving spirit, loving spirit, come and fill our hearts anew. Loving spirit, and we thank you, God. It is your will. It is for your will for us to call the things that are not as though they were. Mark eleven twenty three. It is your will to receive whatever we ask of you. Mark eleven twenty four. It is your will for us to triumph in all things. All things. All of your promises to us, wow, wow, are yes and amen. Father, 
You deal with us as individuals. You know how to deal with Crystal. You know how to deal with me. You know how to deal with Lori. You know how to deal with Phil. You know how to take each of us individually to that place of conquering faith. So, Father, it is my prayer for all of those who desire to walk in the power of your word, that Holy Spirit, you will help them. You are within them. You, one of your your, uh, blessings to us is to help us. A helper. Help us to have the faith to receive the grace of, that God has given us, and we thank you and give you praise in Jesus' name.